Okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul undatan min lisani yafahu qawli. Uh, CPS Management, uh, guest speaker, Professor Dr. Hajar Nurazia Alias. Uh, brothers and sisters, welcome to IIUM Center for Postgraduate Study Webinar Series. Jointly organized by IIUM Center for Postgraduate Study and IIUM Postgraduate Student Society. Uh, my name is Shakira Hanim Binti Abdul Rahman. I am a PhD student in finance from the Kuliah of Economics and Management Sciences. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, okay, um, I, I I found out that uh, some of Prof. Uh, Norazia student is here uh, today with us. Welcome brothers and sisters from UITM. So it, it's, it's kind of glad to see my, my super super junior also. I did my <laughs> diploma in, <laughs> in UITM also last time. Okay, um, and our topic for today's sharing session is on industrial revolution. 4.0, IR 4.0, and the formation of holistic balanced graduates. Before we proceed, I would like to introduce um, Prof. Azia, uh, Prof. Haja uh, Azia to all my friends. Okay, um, uh, Prof. Uh, Professor Dr. Haja Azia Alias, an esteemed professor at the Faculty of Education, University Technology Mara. She is currently holding a position as the Director of uh, Academic Development, Academic Affairs Division, Office of the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International, University Technology Mara, UITM. Uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Hajan Nur Azai is actually one of our alumna, one of our seniors, brothers and sisters. Uh, she holds PhD in his instructional uh, technology from IIUM in 2007. Uh, she has uh, completed her master and her degree in science physics from Inda Indiana University, Bloomington, USA. And um, Prof. Uh, Dr. Nuraza is an expert in instructional design and technology online learning, design and development research. I would like to also learn about this because this is relatively new to me as well. All right, other than that, Prof. Dr. Hajar Nur Azia holding various professional membership as well as being awarded with various awards locally and internationally. This is so impressive. I actually, I Googled information about Prof. this morning. So I was like, wow, <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot of awards actually. Uh, gentle, and then um, before we, we listen to uh, it, I would I would say that today's session is is uh, slightly informal. It's not a, a formal session, yeah. All right. Uh, but however, I would like to remind to all uh, guests today, uh, please mute your mic um, while we listen to the um, uh, uh, to the uh, sharing session from uh, Prof uh, this morning. And at the end of the session, I will open a Q and A. Okay, and you can ask anything um, about today's session directly to Prof. Dr. Hajar Nur Azia. Without further ado, I would like to call upon Prof. Dr. Hajar Nur Azia to begin her session. Please welcome, Prof. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Shakira. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Thank you for having me here today because um, I know I understand with all the chaos and so on, but we always, when we, when we plan something, we always uh, go for it, right? I mean, on kata break a leg last or something like that, so that we can still go on learning and so on. So I I want to thank uh, the postgrad uh, society. I think the Center for Postgrad, like, I, like you said, I was an alumni of IIUM. My best learning years were in UIIUM. I tell you, I, I, would, I don't mind going back to those years. So for those who are already uh, who are in IIUM right now, you should just savor the, the environment and also the learning, how they say the learning experience. Anyway, um, the topic today given to me is uh, IR 4.0 and the balance and the holistic and balanced graduate. So I'm going to share my slide, but before that, let me just say uh, thank you to my students as well who are joining us today. 
they are very young actually. Um, I used to teach postgrad for so many years. I taught research until a few years back. The dean said, "I want you to come back to the faculty and teach younger students, uh, the undergrads." And I'm glad I did that. And I always have my class on Friday because at the end of the uh, week, it is always nice to end with uh, a session with uh, the learners, especially young learners like this group. Okay. So anyway, let me just uh, share my screen. Shakira, can you see my my? Yeah, part? boleh, Prof. All right. So this is the the uh, the Dr. Faham uh, contacted me. So he said, "Can okay, can you talk something about uh, IR four point zero?" Of course, I'm not an expert in IR four point zero. My my expertise is basically technology in instruction, but um. Being the academic um, director of academic development in UITM, my team and I, we look at the whole of UITM. So we look at students coming in, students uh, operational academic operation, students learning experience, students the delivery of the lecturers and so on. So it's a humongous well, job actually, but in the end, we want to make sure uh, our students come out as holistic and balanced. And that is part of the Malaysian uh, higher education uh, framework or um, our plan. Eh? So our higher education plan includes um, what we call this My HE 4.0, which is basically a response to Industrial Revolution IR 4.0, Fourth Industrial Revolution. So for today, what, what, what I would like to do is basically um, go through this, um, uh, maybe a little bit of preamble where we are and so on, and then touch a bit on IR 4.0 because if you look at IR 4.0, you just Google, you got lots and lots of stuff that you can read on your own. But we want to go to the, the other uh, end, I mean, not the other end, to the other part where we want to look at the challenges and expectations of learning in this era, talk about holistic and balanced learners, and of course, we cannot ignore technology. So I'm going to show some of the technology that you can use, you know, just to make sure that you can go through this learning experience, whether you are in IUM or UM or UITM. It's, it's basically, uh, it will best basically help you. Okay. So there are two things that I place there, which is basically the holistic and balance, and also the two terms, responsible and responsive learners, because in order for you to do well in this era, you need to be the two, responsible and responsive. Okay, so IR 4.0, Industrial Revolution 4.0, I think we started talking about this in 2016 when Schwab uh, wrote that book, right? So go, go online, Google the book, a lot of, lots of things. Schwab has actually written a lot of uh, articles as well, but it is about the advanced technology. So I teach innovative technologies to undergrad. They're only in second semester. That makes it very interesting because uh, second semester, the mind is really fresh. And when we talk about technology, uh, you know, the, the response is very good, but uh, not bad, but and soon they have to go on to these things that we that uh, incorporated in Dusty 4.0. So, so will postgrads. Postgrads, actually, you will need to do some research on some of these things, right? So like robots, uh, big data. Why big data? Because now people can easily uh, take your data from Facebook, see what you do on Instagram and what you write on your email. Actually, the, the data can is shared somehow and they can have a profile of yourself. So if you want to go for employment or whatever they we what we do is we go through all this data and sometimes because of a facebook remark you will not be brought in into the company so be careful with that so that goes with uh, privacy of data as well okay and then we got augmented reality we got virtual reality augmented reality mixed reality additive manufacturing now when we manufacture you know, i'm sure i I hope there are also postgrads from the engineering. We talk about 3D printing, right? 
and cloud computing everybody's putting their stuff on on the cloud now you don't see people carrying thumb drive anymore and uh, also internet of things uh, and system integration system do not does not uh, stand alone they are not in silos anymore right so internet of things have gone on to internet of behaviors because um, not only you can use the the gadget or the tools now people can actually look at be people's behavior from the massive network that we are that we are in right so with that um, there is also this idea of third platform era uh, this is from the business point of view and this is uh, promoted by um, idc uh, international data corporation so in 20 they, they said there were there are three chapters to the third platform evolution the first chapter is the experimentation chapter and I, I think we are done with that because during that time it's low connectivity and so on so we are basically in the second one the multiplied innovation so we are already going to 2022 actually but look at 2015 plus app explosion intelligence uh, intelligence and also data as a service so when we say app explosion if i were to ask you today uh, what would you have for iftar some of you will, will be saying uh, okay we are, uh, i'm only I'm, I'm going to go for grab you know because the app thing is really part of you right so when, when we talk when we talk about intelligence you go online and there are many many apps and uh, website telling you we are using ai so for example there, is, there are a number of websites um, actually measuring AI, measuring attractiveness. So this is one. So you go to this website, it will look at your face, you, you give them a photo and it will give you a face score analysis over 10. I, I, mine is really low actually. And on top of that, because of the data that we share and we use a lot well, the the website this particular website will tell you with this um score that you have you are considered beautiful maybe not in your country but maybe in another country it's an interesting thing so they are they're using all this especially in businesses so we are going to the autonomy uh, chapter later uh, from 2022 onward, but that will be soon, right? So then you're going to see invisible technology and so on. It will be very much exciting for all of you, especially students. Lah. And uh, you know these people, not these people, you know this, um, I hope you heard of Watson, J. Watson. You probably is, uh, are familiar with Sophia. Okay, J. Watson is a robot. Mm, actually, uh, kind of a uh, how does it and teaching assistant uh, developed by a professor and this teaching assistant she has been answering i don't know why they are all female but never mind she has been answering questions by the students and students didn't even know that is a robot answering questions on programming right sophia you know sophia she already gained um, citizenship in some arab country and also grace right grace is coming up grace will be here in 2020 grace will be uh, the robot developed for healthcare sector and it is meant for elderly healthcare so people are going they're really going forward with all this technology and uh, let's say let's look at i i presented something at the dental uh, education um, symposium and it's very interesting to, to see some of the things they are doing in dental. Look at this. This is a basically a virtual training environment for dental surgery. And it is being researched and developed at Mahidol. It's here. I mean, not in the uh, Western country, in fact. And uh, of course, dental are using a lot of haptics. If you know what haptics is, basically, haptics will let you feel, right? So if you're into music, there is an app called Move Me. But the app, not the app, and the program actually help you to learn music. It's just like you're 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 new to a musical instrument, but you feel like someone is holding your hand and teaching you to uh, to use the musical instrument. So that's the, the the technology is already here and being used by 
people. So, but we, we, we being me, especially being in education, and you being post grads, of course, you're still, uh, you're still in the system, I mean, uh, university system, we, we need to be thinking more than just the technology. Of course, we cannot ignore it. But is it all about technology? So even Schwab, in 2018, he wrote um, uh, an article and he said, the revolution is about much more than technology. It's opportunity to unite global communities. Now you can easily uh, con uh, be connected to other people outside Malaysia to build sustainable economies, to adapt and modernize governance model, to reduce material and social inequalities, and to commit values-based leadership of emerging technology. So even Schwab is saying, not even Schwab, Schwab is saying that. So even though he was the one who came, who was talking about uh, IR 4.0 in 2016. So if I borrowed this, this clip and you see that lady is saying, I'm trying to figure out which skills I had in February will be transferable to October. So skills will change very, very fast, right? So when, uh, uh, when we look at the, the four main um, technology, we have to look beyond the technology to see what it brings. So for example, all this actually will drive globalization. You, you cannot be thinking of your place, I want to study, I'm from Penang, I want to study in Penang, I want to work in Penang anymore. Because it, it's a globalized world, right? So big data will, will help you understand the, the context. Uh, blockchain will actually um, drive trust, right? Artificial intelligence, of course, will automate decision making. And internet of things will improve your life, okay? Uh, it is an interesting thing. One of my students, when I asked them to go search for innovative technology came up with this um, uh, website that uh, that actually illustrates internet of good things. So I think that's a very good um, term because now we don't talk about just the tool, but we are talking about what we can do with the tool, right? So don't worry about content. If you have to worry about content, content is everywhere. When you, I was doing my PhD, it was so difficult for me to get one particular article. I had to go to the library, I got to fit in a form and get it from another university and so on. But in the age of the fourth industrial revolution with all the network and so on, you can actually contact the author himself, right? And get it from the person. Okay, so when uh, in education, uh, when it comes to learning, learners and education, we have another person by the name of Fisk who came up with Education 4.0 in response to IR 4.0. So he was saying, these are the drivers. I mean, we have to look at future skill. How, how do we educate the youngsters today? What kind of research are you doing? You have to think of future skill. You have to think of the 100 year life, which is basically people will live longer, longevity, right? And the millennial mindset, I have to understand my young uh, uh, learners, they are very young, they, my, even my daughters are already 37 and so on, but the, the students in my class, they are very young, I have to understand that. And I have to use the digital network and devices, and I have to understand how to use personal data, right? Collaboration is very important. You need to collaborate, you need to share content and resources because you have to look at that. Uh, and the person that you, if you are in class or even when you're among friends, we cannot take you as a generalized group kind of thing. There's no blanket thing. We have to look at that particular talent and how we can unleash that potential in that student, right? So uh, I'm talking from the perspective of an educator, but I think as I speak, even the postgrad students can, uh, you can pick up, pick up, uh, pick some of this and actually do, do use it in your research or even those who are doing uh, coursework, right? Okay, so uh, in 2019, we did a research on digital education throughout the country from uh, primary school to secondary school, from Sabah to Kedah and to Johor. So it's very interesting because pe now we are not worried about scarcity of content anymore. We are not. We are not worried about tech being elitist. I mean, you 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 get 
you can easily get um, uh, technology which which is not as expensive as before. Uh, of course, the newer ones will, will cost somehow. And then there are lots of them, right? If you talk about Web 2.02, there are probably thousands now. And now we, are, we have to think of intelligent technology. So I have this picture of Haris. He's only nine. He was only nine when we met him. And we were asking him, Haris, how would you like your learning environment to be? So a nine-year-old from a very small a, a school in, a, uh, in Tapa, not even in Lembah Kelang, could actually portray his class, you know, with the Wi-Fi and so on. And so we asked him, why do you need all these things? Because he, because he said, um, this will help people learn. So, oh, you mean uh, everybody can will learn different? No, somebody will probably not learn as well as another and the technology will help him learn. And that was coming from a nine-year-old. I think he's very intelligent. I hope he will have a very bright future. Okay, all right. So, so when we go into the future, we talk about uh, future work skill. This was for basically for 2020, it's already 2021. Look at what people are looking, looking for people who can make sense, sense making. You look at data, you can make sense of the data, right? Or mindset, design mindset. You have to think of, look at uh, the uh, uh, situation, look at the problem, not necessarily social problem, problem. You know how to intervene, the intervention, you produce a solution. So Shakira was saying, oh, I want to learn about DDR, design development research. I mean, of course, this is not about design and development research, but design and development research requires a design mindset because you solve something for the betterment of something, for learning and so on. So it's very interesting. Look at that. We talk about transdisciplinary, cross-cultural, because now I have students from my faculty uh, who's already in Jeddah. He, he is he's uh, working in Jeddah, so he we he wasn't thinking about you know just being here in the Malaysia, in Malaysia, but he has he's working in Jeddah, meaning he has to understand the culture over there. He couldn't just he shouldn't just bring everything from here and say this is how it is. No, you cannot do that. Even our Malaysian peribahasa pun kata you know if you go into kandang, uh, kambing you mengimbe and so on, right? Anyway. So, the interesting thing about skills for 2030, let's not talk about 2020. I mean, we are going to accept 2020, but look at 2030. This research was done by a group, Pearson, uh, in Australia, but they did it all over the world, right? Uh, from over uh, uh, many countries. I can't, I can't remember the, 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 all the countries at this point, but they showed two findings from the US and also from the UK. So look at US. In 2030, with all the technologies, all the advanced artificial intelligence whatsoever, the skills needed will be number one, learning strategies, psychology. Rank number three is instructing. Rank number four is social perceptiveness, sociology and anthropology, education and training. You go to the UK, you get judgment and decision making. We, at whatever we are learning, whether you being post grad, undergrad, or me at the at the uh, or how do I say at the brim of retirement <laughs> this year, I am still doing this and I'm still learning and I I still need to make a lot of uh, judgment and uh, make uh, decisions based on my judgment but I have the backup of data and technology and so on. So fluency of ideas also important. Active learning and no more waiting for the, uh, the supervisor or the lecturer to tell you what to do. So learning strategies again, very important, originality and so on. So go to this website and you will find a lot of uh, findings. This is a new kind um, I can't remember the, 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 the date of the research, but it's pretty recent. Okay, so with that, when we look at yourself, the challenges, there are a lot, a lot of challenges. But for this morning, I'm only going to share three, basically three. The first one is the knowledge doubling challenge. If you've heard of 
Knowledge Doubling Theory. This is from Fuller in 1982. Knowledge doubles, right? Um, nanology, nanotechnology knowledge double every two years. Clinical knowledge every 18 years. Uh, that is from Schilling. Uh, average, uh, average human knowledge are doubling 13 months. Okay, so Denson also said uh, for medical, in 1950, knowledge doubled every 50 years. Of course, like, yeah? it's very difficult to, to do research and to have um, all the uh, lab uh, kind of thing to, to, to explore new medical frontiers, right? But in 1980, it became seven years. In 2020, 0.2 years, just 73 days. So he's saying that Students who graduate in 2020 will experience four doublings in knowledge before you graduate. So now, when you're graduating in 2023, uh, you'll probably be experiencing a lot more knowledge doubling. What does that mean? When, when, you, when you know that knowledge is doubling, you have to keep abreast, you have to read. Journals should be like, how do I say, part of the stuff that you have in your handbag kind of thing, right? And if you ask IBM, IBM says, a knowledge doubling every 11 to 12 hours in 2020. So if you are doing your research, do not think that your literature review, okay, I'm done with my literature review. Now I go collect data. That is not, um, it's not not true. Yeah, it's, it will not help you because you need to keep track of the knowledge doubling until you are ready for your defense. By that time, you're gonna say, "Okay, I this this was my framework," but you are aware of the new finding, maybe yesterday or the day before. Okay. So the second challenge. This is uh, in, not only for the youngest learners, but also for the uh, for people like me and maybe a little bit more younger, right? The technology and the social media challenge. You see, they did um, uh, research across the world population in the use of social media. They found that 53.6% of the world population uses social media with an average daily use of two hours, 25 minutes. Okay, I'm sure you use more. Right, so we got like Facebook having how a lot of billions they're using Facebook, but not but with that, you need to fight distraction. You are a student, so a lot of distraction with social media. So University of Waterloo in 2019 actually surveyed the undergrads, and the undergrads <coughs> said the use of technology not related to class is actually distracting them. I'm sure you agree with me, right? And study found 71% of Americans sleep with or next to a mobile device. I think the number here will probably be higher, God. Huh? Uh, <laughs> among learners, you're probably with your mobile device like 24, 23 hours a day. Okay. And when uh, with that distraction, and it, be, it means also sometimes fighting the toxic behavior online. You can help it because somebody is going to write something and uh, sometimes even image-based abuse. And worse still, it goes to cyberbullying. Once you get to cyberbullying, you get depressed and you, you, you know, um, it can drive you to a mental health issue kind of thing. So mental health is not something to be taken lightly. Um, the Global Higher Education Research in 2020 actually found that Maintaining your well-being is the first number one rank challenge among students, right? So look at Australia, 81% said that's their number one. Uh, less in France, even though France actually, yeah, they all, you all had a very bad uh, experience with the pandemic. Um, more in, actually this is in the Norway and so on, right? So. You, uh, I believe it's the same thing too in uh, Malaysia, right? Okay, so of course, the third challenge will be challenge of the unexpected. In the case of us now is the COVID challenge. So I, want, I wanted to ask, did we do well? Uh, or are we with the lingering effects of the pandemic? And then suddenly realized that the last few days we're getting really bad. 
So basically, we are very still in my uh, very uh, in it, right? Still very much in it. So with this uh, challenge, we see people going uh, online. Video conferencing is the way for you to to communicate and so on. So in UITM, what we did throughout the year, let me just share you because most of you are research students. We collected a lot of data. So we collected uh, at the start of the MCO in March, we collected data on uh, readiness for online learning. So at that time, uh, 59,000 students answered and 64% were ready for uh, online learning, 64. But we are not thinking of, okay, 64, a majority ready, let's go for online learning 100%. We, we, we couldn't do that because there are the 36,000 students, 36%, not 36,000, 36% who's not ready. So we have to go find another way. So now we get lecturers to use basic technology, even some of us using SMS, some of us using the phone and so on. At one time we were sending uh, uh, materials in thumb drive to our students in the rural area and so on. So we collected data on participation, 97% participated. We also built a student signal search in your ITM. If I put in the, um, what do you call it? The student uh, metric number, I can get where they live and how strong the signal there is. So my students say, okay lah, now they cannot tell me that they are not, uh, <laughs> they don't have connection because I know basically they have good connection. And then we actually check uh, ODL experience. 57% students said actually it's very good or uh, good. 36,000 responded then. We also go for what we call TESA, teaching evaluation, as getting the lecturers to self-evaluate their teaching. Um, let students also evaluate. Lecturers also self-evaluate because we want people to reflect on what they are doing, right? And then we open uh, ODL award nomination. 3,275 nominations were, came in. And it was, it was very, how do I say? It's, it, it's like an overwhelming kind of thing, reading all the nominations from the students. Uh, and uh, we, get, um, we awarded 10 lecturers. And these lecturers actually were not using the high-end virtual reality kind of technology, no. They were basically lecturers who keep who, uh, keep connect, uh, connected to their to students and to just un understand the students who couldn't uh, connect during that time and so on. So those are the people. Those were the people awarded last year. We also um, um, surveyed the the students who did very well, and we found forty thousand students responded, and we found that the number one success factors for most students, if you can guess, is the lecturer, all right? So despite technology being there and so on, that human thing is still very, very important. So we also did a learning experience survey. Uh, we still have about 14.6% students at the end of December who's having a difficult time because of connection and uh, non-conducive learning environment. We surveyed the postgrad as well. Postgrad, okay, nobody's crying there. Is that true for IUM as well? I'm not sure. But then again, postgrad, oh, uh, there's, there is, there's no postgrad is saying that they are having a blast as well, right? Uh, uh, younger students, about 4% say, ooh, they are really enjoying uh, ODL, no, not postgrad. Okay, so with that, uh, with that, with that challenge, we we have we get students and lecturers to rethink. You know, you are going to graduate. Uh, for some of you, are you confident enough? You're going to go out there and actually learn everything during the last year. Do you feel that you are lack of skills? Maybe, uh, maybe not. If you are lacking of skills, we should be get going for getting some of this from all the other uh, content uh, providers available on in on the internet like MOOC and so on. Now the career path is no longer linear. Some of our students are actually think 
they enjoy doing the uh, grab uh, food panda thing now they're thinking going to business they are not going into that career that they've been studying for uh, for four years before right you see that and people are hopefully wiser wiser eh? uh, your safety everywhere not only uh, when people are looking at you or people are fine giving you a 10k fine right and so I highlighted what is research for because just think about if you think about research is about just finishing it and then get get something published maybe you have to rethink because research should now be talking about how do I impact uh, people or the community or the industry with my research right so the role of the learner is different you are not that uh, student coming to class sitting in uh, on that chair waiting for the lecturer to come in to start her powerpoint and listen to her to, for one hour and then say assalamualaikum and that's it we wait for another week you are, you are not that kind of learner anymore because now when it's odl you have to be resourceful you have to pick up on the things that you may you you uh, you're not getting uh, when you are on campus right so even the instructor, we don't do that anymore. We don't just go into the class and just give um, uh, all the information, but we want to make sure our students are uh, well, they are healthy, they are okay. So we keep asking them. Okay? And of course, the technology comes in perfectly to help us do that. All right. So but this is something that I want to share because this is very interesting as we do all this data collection. I see this thing coming from the student, right? And the students are saying, I believe we can get through this. They're more resilient uh, later, sooner or later. Something we experience just in a matter of time, we can positively see as a preparation towards the future. Right? This is very good coming from a young student. Having said that, somebody said, somebody said this obstacle can be overcome by having a well-disciplined routine and willingness to push beyond our comfort zone. In the end, self-effort is the key for students to go through this sudden change, self-effort. So this student said, I genuinely feel like students are the least affected because adapting to the lack of a learning environment might be a bigger shock, but with time and optimism, we progress along the way. Oh, one of your friends are saying this. Right. So another one said, I am more independent than ever. ODL means students really need to be independent since timetable is a lot more flexible. Always be ready is my new mantra. Okay, no more depending on friends to remind you to study, to finish the assignments before deadlines and so on. So after all, the, those are our own responsibilities to ourselves as students. And this was coming from a second semester student. I am so proud of this kind of students that we have all over Malaysia right now, inshallah, right? Okay. So before we go into the holistic kind of thing, we need sometimes from time to time, we need to pause, uh, especially if you're a postgrad and you have a family, you have two kids. Uh, my daughter, she's doing her postgrad uh, uh, research, no, study in with two children and she's doing dentistry. I can see the chaos, the, you know, the, this, a lot of things that she has to handle, right? So, but I keep telling her, make sure you tarik nafas, think about your well being and so on. So, so one of the way of you doing this, I know I'm not a psychologist, uh, and I, I don't, I'm not an expert in psychology, but it is good at any point in your time to ask what is the perfect title of your life story now, now title of your story right so i asked my daughter actually what is the perfect title of your life story and this was what she said eaten mess eaten mess what is eaten mess so i googled so actually eaten mess is actually a dessert uh, it's like a disconstructed pavlova kind of thing so it's scrumptious it's good but there's no structure to it so I understood what she meant by eaten mess then, which means that that was what her life is, you know, um, trying to fit in the, the lecturer's demand, trying to fit in the children's demand and so on, but it's still very sweet. 
So take take a few minutes and find that perfect title for your life story at this point. I hope it's not something like into the darkness. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, don't do that. If you have that, you got to go find um, help before it's too late, you know, and it will drive you into, you know, something that you don't want to be. So that is my advice. And before, and but you must remember, especially the post grads, you got this opportunity to impact the lives of others with your, with whatever you're doing, your research, whether you're in finance, you are doing uh, in engineering, in medical, or in education, this is what you get to do. So with that, that will actually help drive you to move, right? And with the technology that, uh, that comes along, that will also help you a lot. Okay, so when, when we talk about holistic and balance and being responsive and responsible, I'm gonna go to that for now. For, for at, the, at this moment, I think you agree with me that we have all these challenges, we have all this technology, we are also looking at ourselves, and then we, we have to understand what we are doing. So this is something that I, I use a lot when we talk about learning, it is about change, okay? Uh, if you look at yourself, it's about the change in yourself, the change in your cognitive, affective, psychomotor ability. Um, but as you go through processes, you go through experience, you get the outcomes and you change. And uh, this is what learning is all about. If there is no change after this session, meaning you don't learn anything, nothing changed uh, within you that that means you do not learn anything from my session, for example. Yeah? And then, um, and it has to be active and interactive. You cannot be at the receiving and waiting all the time. So even uh, UNESCO, uh, that's, uh, UNESCO four pillars in learning, learning to know, that's the knowledge kind of thing, learning to do, skill, learning to be, uh, you know, it's something uh, about the outcome and learning to live together. That is very, very important because with all this knowledge and skill, you go out into the world, you go out into the society, you go into the industry. So what we want to do on campus is to make sure that your learning is engaged, you find it significant and meaningful as well. So anyway, uh, for the postgrads, especially the undergrads, you'll probably be around here when it comes to your cognitive level. But postgrad, you're doing a lot of this. That's why it is more difficult for you. So understand the dimension of your uh, learning, especially this is just cognitive. Eh? And sometimes people are only looking at one dimension, the cognitive process, but there's also the knowledge dimension because you need to, to have this uh, knowledge of Cognition as well, how the thinking about thinking kind of thing. So you are not going to be just trying to remember uh, remember something by listing. That's not a postgrad or even undergrad. We don't do this much anymore. You have to go up higher, maybe to apply, right? And to create. At the end, we 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 push you to create. For example, a learning portfolio. This is a very high high end cognitive process actually. And we're already doing that uh, for in my class, second semester already doing a learning portfolio. Okay, so we when we translate that to practice, you've got facts and theories to acquire. Now for the postgrad, you have to think of the multi, trans and interdisciplinary realm. You cannot be thinking about your field alone because I don't think research works that way anymore, right? Now we talk about mechanical engineering and dentistry uh, because we need to impact how to, to find solutions for some dental thing using mechanical engineering expert, that kind of thing. So the co-supervisors by right, they shouldn't be at the background. Co-supervisors should be from different disciplines that will help you with your research and it makes your research more impactful. So the skills and competencies, of course, you have to go beyond what you, you do maybe five years ago. Now you have to be good in analytics and so on. Okay, so the nature of postgrad level education, because we are talking with postgrads here, the scholarship, uh, how you contribute and generate knowledge is very important. So you have the depth, but you also need the speed 
because especially in my field the knowledge, like the knowledge doubling uh, challenge just now yeah you you cannot be um, uh, uh, researching something in 2010 and then graduate in 2027 20, for example because because technology was changed so much by the time you defend your thesis we will be asking you why are you doing this the people have been doing this a lot we don't want that so you have to have some speed and of course you should always have this researcher mindset not only postgrad also uh, undergrad you have to resolve think of resolving the problem and providing solution to that particular context or situation all right so oh experience yes you need to apply your knowledge and innovation where you impact the community and also the society all right so look at one of the latest um, publication not really latest eh? 2019 look at the title i just want you to look at the title the role of social network analysis right as a learning analytics tool in online problem-based learning wow there's a lot of stuff in there right and that is the kind of research that people are doing now so this was uh, published in the british medical education bmc medical education journal right okay so when we talk about learning postgrad or undergrad when we say impacting the community we have to think of the Millennium Development Goals and the SDG. Now we are at SDG, 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goal. Like for example, good health and well-being. So my physical and health education student, uh, you are actually going for this. I mean, you have to be thinking about this. And uh, people who are doing um, maybe social science, social uh, sciences especially, you go for uh, no poverty and so on so that your research will have to be looking at uh, this kind of um, interdisciplinary thing that will impact that will support one of these goals okay all right so when you do innovation as well you used to be just quadruple where you have uh, government uh, society uh, and uh, a two four 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 uh, components right but now we have already added the uh, environment. You know, we used to have society and the basic model of uh, the, uh, the, the innovation, but now the environment has come in. So you think about that, especially if you are doing some form of innovation. Okay, so with all this, uh, how do you see yourself? What kind of a learner are you? You know you need to be competent. You have to have knowledge, you have to have skill, and you have to have this autonomy. You have to decide, you know, uh, you want to, uh, uh, you have your own will, your own needs, your values. Maybe you are, if medical, you're engaging in clinical activities when you want to. If you can do that, of course, freely choosing to devote time, okay, energy, and so on. And then, other than that, your will uh, and your freedom, you also need to be related to others. So you have to be connected to others to your fellow students, your teachers, and patients. That is the need among learners. But the most, in, uh, not really, in, uh, how, I wouldn't say it's the most important, but you really need now is to be resilient, to bounce back when you have difficult experiences. So let's say something happened and you couldn't, um, you failed your test. For example, you cannot be saying, Oh, this is so bad. I am so lemah. I am so, I'm so stupid. Or that kind of. No, we don't. We cannot be doing that. Not in this era of IR 4.0 when things are moving very fast, and you cannot be left behind. So you really need to bounce back and get this stay positive uh, mode, right? So when we talk about balance, holistic graduates. This is basically what the ministry is looking at. Can you see that? The nine thing will be the industry 4.0 thing that I showed earlier. But there is this balance that we want. The ethics and morality and the ilmu, knowledge and skill. So this is the frame for what you should be. So when we do this, of course, uh, 
uh, when we talk about akhla and so on, we need this kind of skills here, ethics, spirituality, leadership, teamwork, and so on. And of course, when we go for uh, knowledge, we need for you to have knowledge, skill, skills, meaning thinking skills as well. You see, remember the future skills just now in 2020? There's a lot of uh, cognitive thinking skills there, right? So when if you look at uh, what they wrote in uh, my he 4.0 i'm just going to read a bit here every graduate will have the relevant disciplinary knowledge okay you you're an education student you've got uh, your phd in education for example or your master's in education and skills and ethics and morality as well as appropriate behaviors mindsets cultural and civilizational literacy beradab Okay, all right. Uh, so when we look at um, in UITM, excuse me for a while. Uh, when we look at in UITM, what we do is we uh, we propose uh, what we call education 5.0. Uh, if you just excuse me for a while. Hello, saya dalam session. Ah, saya dalam session ya. Ah, saya dalam session, jap, jap. Okay. All right, okay. So, uh, we we came up with Education 5.0 at UITM because we, this is in response to IR 4.0 because we don't want people to get lost in the technology. So, we said Education 5.0 is a learning-centric ecosystem that is sustainable, balanced, and principled, driven by values, powered by intellect and afforded by new ubiquitous technology. So basically what it means is that we are not talking about smart technology and machine uh, doing what we do, rather how well we do, helped or assisted by technology. How well do I teach using technology? You know, it's not about technology as 100% doing all the teaching. That's not it. So with uh, Education 5.0, I highlighted the main thing. We want to look at ADAP and Amana. People in IIUM, you are great with ADAP. You know ADAP. Uh, the one simplest thing to say is the proper place of things. Or uh, you know, you understand the alam, you understand the people, you understand the creator, your connection to the creator and so on. So you have ADAP. And technology is used as enablers and scaffold. But the crux is learning. So I learn, the student learn, my P, my PA learning, um, administrators learning, because our ultimate, uh, how do I say, our ultimate aim is to nurture that person. See, have you come across that word? A philo math, the person who loves learning. So that is our response to IR 4.0. So we see the student, this is the student, doing continuous learning, learning all the time, responsive and mindful. Uh, mindful means you're aware. In, in Bahasa Malaysia, it's called ketara sedar. I think mindfulness is lah. Okay? You're mindful of your environment, your future, where you are and so on. You see the larger picture. You have solid vision of what she want, you want to achieve. You take responsibility. So you're just like an agent. Of your own learning so even agent of a tourism company for example you know the information you know how to move it you know how to sell uh, that uh, particular uh, package and so on so that agent is you when it comes to learning so we push for responsive and responsible in when it comes to developing this balance and holistic uh, uh, student or graduate right so this is let me just um, give this a scenario to the postgrad. Eh? On one end, you have the topic and scope determined by the supervisor. This is your research. Lah. Task assigned uh, weekly meetings with uh, task assigned and weekly meeting with supervisor. Defense other schedule set by supervisor. That's one situation. Another situation at the, uh, this end uh, on, on our right, the topic scope and scope explored on one's own. Sorry, topic and scope explored on one's own. Consult experts from all over the world when needed. Members of several committees of learning check with supervisor at times to ensure right track. See the difference? I hope 
not many of us are on the left side. We should be going towards the right side now because only with that, uh, with, we need that in order for you to survive the IR 4.0 and how people learn nowadays because you basically need to be on the driver's seat, in the driver's seat. Uh, you have to drive. Uh, you can stop and buy some corn or jagung or whatever nasi lemak at the, uh, you know, at the side of the road if you want to, but it's you driving. Of course, in order for you to drive, you need a map, maybe. You don't need a map, you need ways. And then you need, uh, you need to know where you are going. And maybe someone can sit next to you and help you with that, right? But basically, you are at the driver's seat. So when it comes to uh, learning with uh, in the era of IR 4.0, you have to think of what we call agility. You have to be fast, you have to be flexible, and you have to be collaborative. So I'm going to go into what we think, what we uh, what we see as a responsive and responsible uh, learners. So uh, this is a uh, the frame for for responsive learning. You are mindful. That means you're aware, oh, something, I, some, somebody just found out something about this particular topic. And, or you're aware of who you are. I'm a postgraduate student. I'm an undergraduate student. I am a physical health student. I need to really understand what's, what's happening with the health in terms of COVID, whatever. You know who you are and what you need also. You are connected. You know the latest news. You are active. Spoon feeding is a thing of the past. Do not, do not wait for people to spoon feed you, right? And learning should be from uh, seamless. It should be for all, from all things and people, okay? So this person who is responsive normally will go beyond. If we ask them to do something, they'll go beyond. So let me just share with you. This is one of my students from two semesters back during the first MCO. And the, the task was actually to go and learn through MOOC for two weeks. That's all. After two weeks, you write whatever your experience in the portfolio. So uh, students, not, most of the students did that. After two weeks, they say, lah, okay, that it was an impressive experience or whatever. Lah, yeah. okay, but this particular student actually finished the MOOC, got a certificate from McMaster and University of California, San Diego. Not only that, a few months later, she WhatsApp and she messaged me and said, Prof, I finished another MOOC. So I think she has taken this, uh, how do I say, this effort to basically, basically self-direct her learning. This, she has actually moved beyond. And you need to do that, this because, like I said, sometimes there will be things that you're going to miss because there's so many things um, moving forward very fast. Knowledge is doubling, for example, like, like we said. So you have to pick up on these things that you want to know or you need and do it on your own, right? So that is being responsive. Being responsible, you have to be responsible for your learning. You have to sustain your learning. You have to make sure there's no weakening. Uh, you don't want uh, the interruption or weakening, but instead you want to grow and maintain pace, right? So you have to regulate regulate. Why do we fast? Because we need to regulate ourselves. Why do we pray every day? Because we need to regulate our spiritual, uh, the spiritual part of ourselves. So even cognitive, you regulate. You cannot let it be, you know, and motivation. If it's going down, you have to bring it up. Okay, so this is the responsible learner and being resourceful. You don't know this, you go find expert. You are not sure about this, you go ask your friend. If you again, go ask the lecturers, go ask the supervisors, you know, because you all, you come together and learn on uh, together. That's another way, being resourceful. And of course, uh, being agentic, like what I said before. So we have all this um, responsible and responsive. When we look at assessment, lecturers will do all these things to you, lah, right? But you want to go for this. You want to try to self-assess or get your peer to assess. So we sometimes give students portfolio because we want you to learn about yourself. 
because we want you to learn about what you don't know and what you can know. So, for example, this was from my research class. So, we had a portfolio and this particular student of mine, Shaliza, Alice actually, she developed this research uh, matrix research design on her own. I didn't ask her to do that, but she did that through when she was building up her portfolio. Of course, we expect um, some, you know, uh, reflection on how you feel, but that is good. You always need to know how you are. Okay, so self-assess and do collaborative learning, uh, especially now because you can, um, you can even collaborate with someone outside from the university, UIA and UITM from across uh, the university, across campus, you collaborate or have a learning group, a proper study group where you do reciprocal teaching, meaning one person teach, the other person um, become the student, another person later, this, the other person teach and the rest will become the student or reciprocal assessment. You assess each other, you review each other's work and you become what they call now a coaching circle. So forget about this here, this is about the lecturer doing this. But this is more about you doing it on your own. And you can also do this, the community-based uh, thing where you, you collaborate uh, with other people from doing different research. So you get a very solid program for the community. Right? So this is one of the things that we do a lot in UITM. We call it the Global Learning Initiative. So we bring in experts. We bring in people who are significant in the field and we get students, they collaborate with us. So for example, here, Miss Nadia, she brought in Bartolome from, oh, I, I still cannot remember where it's from. The class is intercultural language or something like that. So they really get firsthand experience from another person from another culture. So you don't need your lecturer to do this, actually. You can easily connect to people overseas now, especially if you go to conference or you follow their uh, their article, you can get them to come in and talk to you. And most of the time, they're very happy to do that. Okay, so uh, I, I developed this when I was in UIA. This was part of my thesis, actually, because my, my thesis was on motivational self-regulation. So uh, what I want to show is this thing, uh, mastery for, and performance self-talk, meaning you always talk to yourself, self-talk. Okay, what is it that I want to do? Am I getting this? Do I know how to do this? Is, and uh, am I performing well, right? Or this is another one, self-consecuting. If I don't do this, what will happen to me? Am I going to fail, right? And what I like about uh, this, uh, when I did this, I, what I like is this environmental restructuring, meaning, oh, learning in this room is not helping me. I need to find a better place. Or clean up everything, uh, put up some uh, stuff on the wall so that it will help me. My, I think both my daughters love environmental restructuring. They, they restructure uh, very often and they feel good. Oh, look at my desk, it's clean, now I can study, that kind of thing, right? So, you know, uh, when we talk about all this, don't worry about all this uh, uh, Arabic stuff. You, are, you know better than me. Uh, but there was uh, something that that we can actually look at ourselves. You know, we set goals, we develop plans, we act, we monitor, we evaluate, and then we change, we improve on it. Okay, so uh, I think I have about another half an hour or so, but uh, let me just go through some of the technology that will help us. Right, for example, technology. Do you can we ignore it? No, you cannot ignore it. Uh, you, but you keep, you have to keep pace of of what we have. Uh, of course, better still increase speed lah in knowing what technology that uh, that's available, right? So as a student, um, you have you want to be this holistic, balanced student, right? So not only you know a lot of stuff in terms of the knowledge, or you can do a lot of things in terms of skill, but you're also a very ethical and you're you know this good person that who will go out into the society and into the industry and function very well, right? So while you're learning, technology will help you support your learning, of course, the skills, collaborative learning, your regulation of motivation, and also your well-being. Actually, it can help you, right? 
So let me just show you. This is a, um, a slide where I put in some. There are many, many, a lot more. You may know more than me. Uh, I mean, you will, you will know more in terms of all these things, but I'm just going to put some of the things. Like for example, we, we normally have problems with managing the uh, too many things, right? Notes and uh, facts coming from different resource, resources and so on. We also need to get in touch or, can, uh, or access to content. So we have more videos and so on. We also need to do info, information sharing or referencing. So now you can easily link or you use EndNote or Mandela or even Microsoft Word also have referencing. You don't have problem with that any much anymore. And if you're doing in, going to modeling and creating, that's the 3D printing, the haptic thing. And when it comes to collaborating, we can do a lot online uh, with the help of technology. So if you're doing research, it's easier now to get respondents from other places in, the, in Malaysia or even the world with the condition that you know someone, right? Uh, that will help you. So you still need to collaborate. Okay, so why do I show you this particular case? You know MOOC, Massive Open Online Course? Because I want to highlight this. Look at this MOOC. If you're a dental, dentistry, a dental student, there is a MOOC, Digital Biomaterial example eh, from the University of Hong Kong with a team of 25 dental practitioners and researchers across 10 dental specialties from around the world led by Professor Juka Matindina and Jane Soy. Can you imagine you going to this module you learn from the best people in the field. That's the, that's the beauty of MOOC, right? And most of the time it's free unless you want certification. So please, you know, if you feel like you're missing something like uh, this particular stats that you don't know, go find your MOOC. Normally it will be there and you can con uh, follow it. Of course, Many people are learning on Padlet, no big deal. But the good thing about Padlet, especially if you're doing cases, this is from uh, actually uh, from uh, medical students eh, studying oncology or something like that. Uh, that's my daughter actually. So what uh, the, the, beauty, the beautiful part of it is that at the end of the semester, they export everything to PDF and they get a thick, um, a book kind of thing, materials to study for the exam. So what you put on Padlet becomes part of the study resources. So it's, it's very interesting use of technology. So I use Padlet as well to get the students, uh, my students uh, outcome. But and I see that it has, it has moved a lot better from the beginning. Lah. Now the response is, a, is more, you know, I can feel that people are, are into it. Right, of course. Now you can get expert in the room, right? You can do this uh, easy, or you can do a hybrid thing. We do this in in UITM. Uh, Professor Isamidin here from UITM, teaching math. You know when we started the MCO, the math lecturers were among the people who were screaming, "How can we teach math online?" <laughs> now we have a hybrid. Global lecture, we call it global lectures because students uh, from were from Uzbekistan, another a group of students in another uh, room and another in another room. So we got three three location hybrid learning. So it can be done, right? So I, I can actually arrange for one group of postgrad from IIUM, another group of postgrad from UITM. We can do this. And we learn about what do you want to learn? Design and development research, or maybe meta analysis, or whatever. We can do that. It will be more interesting. Okay. So other than that, um, you have to have all these tools for goal setting, for sharing, uh, and so on. So let me just share a bit. Um, I I get my students to look at uh, Google Keep. This is one of the Chrome extension. Very simple. You, you read a lot from the web, right? What you can do is every time you read, you can highlight and it goes to what we call Google Keep and you can save it as notes. 
So you can open your notes after uh, a few sessions of your reading session. You can put them together. So that's the, the good thing about uh, the Google Apps. Another Google App will be Power Notes. Uh, Power Notes will let you read and then you can have a project outline. Uh, for example, you want to you write about, um, in my case, this is also my, my basically my project. I want, I want to write about um, experiential learning. So, but I need to bring in the issue of uh, technology and so on. So while I do that, I have a project outline. When I, I find this material, I highlight it and it goes into the, the different parts of the project. So after that, I can download it and into a Microsoft Word. So I have a full project uh, outline kind of thing. But it's not copy and paste uh, work. Is supposed to be a notes and outline for your writing. So it's a good start when you want to start writing something and you need to have a frame for that writing. So there are lots and lots of uh, Google apps. I, I won't show anymore. Um, this is the basic mind mapping and problem three that you should do. And it's very easy to do now, especially with uh, the tools on the web 2.02. So my, like this is from my research class uh, years back, how my students were trying to figure out what she wants to put in, the, in her thesis, I think. And another one, this is called a problem three. She looks at the problem and she drew that three, how you're going to handle what will happen, what, what leads to the problem and what you need to do, the, sorry, the effect of the problem, okay? So you can see the problem three and you can write a very good problem statement. So when it comes to um, basic, um, not, not basic, for learning a topic, look at this. This is from my second semester student. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember whose. But look at how, how, uh, how easy, not how easy, how good it is when you can map out what you learn in actually one lesson. So I'm, I'm a very visual person. I think you should also try doing this whenever you are you know, stuck with some um, problem, research, research problem or whatever, okay? Um, people who love um, drawing, you can learn sketch noting. This is also, I think you can do this on Apple. You can, buy, you can download this app on Apple Store. I'm not sure I have not done it, but I, I love to do it. You can even draw it on your own. If you are good, you can even follow Doug's uh, module free, how to do this. And I've seen this now, look at that. This is um, a PhD, this is actually an article using sketch notes in PhD research and academic practice by Buff and it's, it was uh, recently published. How she used a sketch note to um, actually, this is one paper, I think a paper on affinity spaces on G204. So instead of typing all the information, she actually sketched the notes in this form. It looks very interesting, especially for people who are visual. This can be, uh, it helps with the retention of knowledge as well, okay? All right, so you wanna try, you may wanna try that. Of course, writing and presenting now no problem because you've got Microsoft can even turn your word into PowerPoint. Grammarly is there. Subscribe Grammarly so that you can write better. Uh, if you want to present, you even um, PowerPoint can easily create video now, right? So a lot of AI-based uh, stuff in Microsoft. So design ideas, writing assistance, and so on. Okay, so we, we like we said, we cannot ignore technology. Uh, technology also will help you collaborate. So this is also from from my uh, students last semester. They are supposed to come up with a project. So even this semester, I'm going to use Trello, but I like this, look at that. How they set up the meeting, overcome the problem, understand and help each other. So if I were to click this, I will see their, what, they, what they talk about and what they put in. So they even have their, their, their members role. So it's important for project members to know their role. So if I click this, I would know Arif Najmi's role and Faiz's role. In the end, they gave me the final output. Okay, this is a simple one. This is a, a more elaborate one where they actually put up 
what they want to do, want to use in the project. So this is a more extensive um, uh, Trello. But if you are um, doing this for your own, it's, it's also good because you can put in chapter one, chapter two, or problem statement, problem uh, uh, problem statement, whatever uh, literature review, and so on. And you can put in all the stuff that you are using, and it will it helps you manage your the whole project. So again, they have their role. So you are, if I were to click this, this is a screenshot, so I, I can't click this. I will know who's in, in charge of slide presentation and so on. All right. So other than that, there are lots of other tools. I, I just um, showed some that maybe you are using it as well already, but just to highlight to those who have not seen it before. But it's also important to exercise your brain. While I was in uh, in the in IIUN doing my PhD, I did this. I normally go up and uh, go online and do this Lumosity game. It used to be free. Now you have to pay. <laughs> you have to pay to unlock the full access. So what Lumosity will do is train your speed, your memory, your attention, your flexibility, your problem solving. Now language and metro games. And it's very it's very interesting. Now it has become a more um, comprehensive, comprehensive app because you can actually look at the stats, how your memory has improved, how your attention has improved. So go find this kind of uh, technology tool that will help you. Um, you know, like we said, we want to be that holistic and balanced student. We want to be um, active cognitively and also physically, right? And we have to be, we want also to track our well-being. Uh, we, we go for a solat. Right, so we, we find peace and solace in solat, for example, in prayers. But from time to time, no, not but yes, and from time to time, we just go and use these technology tools and help us play around with this, right? So just track your well being. So, in for example, we have one called Happy Fi. Uh, if you go to Happy Fi, they will give you some questions to see who, what you are and so on. They don't think that I am stressed uh, and I don't need to reduce my. Uh, my stress or I'm not grieving uh, but <laughs> they recommend uh, negative thoughts uh, to how to conquer negative thoughts to me so I actually went through uh, a few of the uh, the modules it, it, it's interesting because it's, it's easy for example they just want you to watch a very uh, short video on waves on the you know splashing and so on but it becomes very you can become uh, it, you can be peaceful. You can be looking at some of the things that they, they put up for you. So it's a coaching uh, app actually, but it's, it's good. But you don't have to go for Happy Fi. What, what I mean is that there are lots of technology that does this and uh, these things now, right? Okay, so in Education 5.0 UITM, uh, we want to advocate what we call inspired learning. We want uh, students to go beyond, I see, I remember, I do, I, I understand. Of course, we don't want you to forget. We want our students to, to do this. I think, I discover, I feel, I value, I share, I gain. So that is what we want to do. And I hope, I think it's, it's true even for all other students in, uh, in Malaysia or even in the world that in the end, we would really like you to be someone who can value stuff and not also, uh, and share it, you know, and collaborate for the betterment of uh, the community, the society, and so on. Okay, so Shakira, I think I, I'm i going to end it here. Uh, I have about one and a half hours as mentioned by Damia. So I want, I want to end with never stop learning because life never stops teaching. So all the best to everyone, including my students and the other students from UITM who came in for this uh, session. Uh, with that, uh, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. I'm going to stop sharing, yes. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. I learned a lot today, especially on the journey. What is the perfect title of your life story? So I think I want to put on 
uh, on FB to share. I have, I have a group. Personally, I have group of friends, a group of mothers who are doing post grad study. So I think I want to put that on my FB every day. What is the perfect title of your study <laughs> so that it can keep us uh, motivated? And the and the other thing is, uh, but when when you mentioned about the collaboration. Um, here we are uh, like, like myself and some other friends who are doing uh, same area in finance. We were in silos whereby we have a group of small, uh, a small group session, a sharing session kind of so that we can we can help each other. So I think we, we must collaborate more with other kulia and other uni as well. Um, yeah. So we, we can uh, ha share uh, a lot more uh, than we uh, well, then what we have now. Okay, mm. with, with that, I would like to open uh, a Q&A session or else I will keep asking and talking and asking a <laughs> from Prof today because this is like a golden a golden opportunity because I learned a lot as as an educator because I'm teaching part-time and as a student, which oh, yeah, I, I, I teach part-time because I love to share my knowledge with others, Prof. Okay, mm. I, I would like to open the session now. Uh, maybe question? maybe Shakira would like to share your life a life story <laughs> title of your life story. Um, uh, today um this week um the title of my my life story is basically um counting because next week my my daughter is coming back from hostel so this is wow. the first um, <laughs> we we are we are apart so <laughs> I'm getting used to it so uh. Wow. My friend keep asking, you counting this? Yes, I'm counting this because this is the first time my daughter is away from me. So, um, so we understand well. you as a mother. Yeah, but but I'm 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 relieved a bit, Prof, when when my daughter is away, so that I I less I my life less chaotic. I don't need to send her to school, pick up her from school, so I I have more time for for my research. Alhamdulillah, that's a good thing lah. Apart yeah. from missing. Her. Uh, away from home, kind of. True, true. That's true. Yeah. All right. Any question, or else I will be keep uh, asking questions <laughs> from Prof about all the learning session, the can, learners. Can they, can they type? Can they type at the chat? Can yeah. can? Uh -uh. Uh, you can turn on your mic, or you can uh, type your questions on the chat box, and I will ask the question uh, on your behalf. Anybody, anybody? I we have about uh, eighty participants uh, today, and uh, from other uni as well. Uh, actually, I invited my friend also joining the session. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's hear from Pro. That's it. Any question? Hey, come on, let's let's use this. Is 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 it is not easy to get a face to face uh, uh, session with uh, uh, Prof. Any question, brother and sisters? Okay, I have one new message. Prof, what is your opinion on democratizing learning in IR 4.0? Okay. Uh, when we say democratizing learning, that means... Um, no, never mind. Uh, we are saying that you have the basically the freedom to learn lah. Basically, right, you democratize, that means people can learn from uh, anywhere, any any person, any platform, any university and so on, right? Uh, actually, we are already going towards that, um, especially now with not only with the, oh, no, she down, okay. Um, especially now when we have all this possible platform like now i am with you in iium right so actually i can learn from a, a, a kulia or a lecture in iium at the same time i can go to another university and learn from another person in another university so that that thing will happen very very soon actually because uh, universities are also opening up uh, we not only have people like uh, things like MOOC or even like um, apa ni, what we call micro credential. So that means when we say micro credential, anybody 
who is willing to learn, uh, including, let's say, okay, let's say, for example, um, uh, a person who's already retiring, right? So they want to learn, but they cannot come to campus and they cannot learn just like uh, any other people. So we already, we, are, we have the, the platform now, the avenue, basically, right? Um, for people to come in. So in our case, we already have a policy. We call it um, education, uh, uh, no, policy pengajian, uh, policy for the underrepresented, not underprivileged, underrepresented. So I'm we are opening up UITM to anybody, a, a housewife, for example, who wants to learn maybe from our group of uh, diploma in education uh, lecturers, one particular topic on psychology, for example, like, uh, child psychology. So she can come in, take that course, and then maybe decide that, okay, lah, I, I'm not going to pursue anymore. I'm going to go to IUM and do the same thing. So that is happening. So people... And people can come in, and if they don't, if they don't have that, um, the what do you call the uh, syarat eh, to come in. Uh, sometimes we need SPM lah, whatever lah. Now we already have uh, accreditation of prior learning experience. So if you've been working all this while, you do not have a diploma, but you've been working for ten years, you can come in and do degree straight away. Or you don't have a degree, but you have a, a diploma and you've been working, you can come in and do master's uh, straight away. See? Because we, we are doing that uh, even in Malaysia. So people who, whoever wants to learn, we should be able to be providing through all the platform. I, I will tell you one story, lah, not story, one instant. Uh, Datuk Siti Nohaliza wanted to come into your ITM to study. Okay? So she said, um, but I would like my classes to be at home. Uh, because we understand lah, if that if Siti Noaliza were to be in section 17, Shakira, kan? If she comes into section 17, I think not even the students, uh, uh, not just the students, the lecturers will not be uh, focusing on their job. They will all be going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, finding out where Siti Noaliza is. So she said, can, we, can I have my classes at home? But then that was a few years back and we were not ready. So we said no. So that, that's a miss to me. By right, we could have done that and we could have the online thing. We already have our e-learning platform, but people were not, um, were not open to it. So they said no. So that, that's a miss. And that shouldn't be uh, in the era in, in the era nowadays, we need to give um how there's avenue or um, access to this kind of people. Very few Siti Nohaliza underrepresented, but she can come in and learn through online, through the MOOC, through the videos that the lecturers have created and just stay connected via an online platform and she can get the degree. And I, I, I hope I'm answering your question, Yashida. Right? Um, Development, development of soft skills in education 4.0. Education 4.0 basically is about development of soft skills. It's not about development of hard skills, actually, right? Because when it, uh, you, you, I, can, I can teach my students uh, AR. I tell you, if I were to teach augmented reality to my second semester students, they do better than me because skills, basically, it can easily be learned. Uh, that kind of skill, hard skill. But I need them to know how to use AR responsibly, right? How do you use augmented reality in a responsible way? So that also include that's part of the soft skill thing. And also communication skill. Some people said online, we cannot, we cannot teach communication. I think online, when it comes to oral communication, you can teach it very well you know i can get now uh, somebody to uh, to be to to actually to present something and we can all the peers can all say okay you should do this and so on we can do that so in education 4.0 it is to me it is about the soft skill part the leadership the especially the cognitive thinking skill uh, also as well you know the cognitive means uh, making decision and that kind of thing 
Because sometimes we got lots of facts lah. We know all the theories in the world. But when people say, how do you solve this? We cannot, we, we have no answer. Because we are not, you know, we are not, <laughs> uh, uh, how do I say, educated or um, uh, given the chance to do that uh, while you are learning. Okay, Umi, I hope I, un I, I answered that as well. Any other question? But that was very good from Hida just now. From that's from Kulia of apa ya? K K. Oh, architecture. Um, very good. Prof Hida again. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, following up to my question just now, uh, I'm looking into um well because I look I work a lot with community and uh, what what is your opinion about um. Again, towards uh, democratizing uh, learning and knowledge, uh, us learning from uh, someone like a fisherman and and uh, yeah. um, someone which again is underrepresented, but yeah. they have uh, experience. Yeah. And because I work with community and work something on sustainability, so fishermen may have histories on climate change, and they would yeah. say that sometimes now. Uh, Dulu ikan banyak, sekarang ikan kurang. So these are some of the things that we can get. So uh, in IR 4.0, how do you fit that into the equation? Ah, okay. Uh, let's let's say in our Malaysian higher HE 4.0, uh, that's that's also okay lah, yeah, because it's also yeah. a response to Correct. IR 4.0. Correct. Mm -hmm. In our my HE 4.0, we put in specifically even in our education 5.0. We put in specifically about learning from the industry, learning from the community, learning from the society as part of learning. Meaning that's true, which means that's why the ministry, for example, now is asking you to do service learning. Service learning means you go to the community, you serve them, you serve the community while learning something. But at the same time, the community will teach you well, like you learn from them, like what you are saying. So it's already in the framework of our higher education 4.0, which is also basically uh, a, a response to IR 4.0. But I really like that uh, your what you are saying because you okay. Let me again asik bagi story je ni Shakira tak pula ya. Apa boleh, bro, boleh, boleh, boleh story. I enjoy the story. <laughs> I, I have one instant. I, I, I've been doing this for many years. Every end of semester, I will ask my students, what, what is meaningful to you? What is meaningful learning to you? Okay. So there was one instant, one student answered, meaningful learning is learning from makcik yang jual kerepek depan bank. And that struck me, you know. So actually, I was trying to figure out what she meant by that because it wasn't a um, uh, face-to-face -face kind of thing. She wrote it down. So I was thinking maybe she actually learned from how industrious or how resilient the makci is or also the way the makci handles the customer and so on. But that is something that we, we appreciate that you are learning not just from that lecturer who brings you the PowerPoint that she developed actually two years ago, same thing over and over again, but you're also learning from someone else outside. So even in our dasar pembelajaran UITM, I'm talking about UITM because I know UITM lah ya. Yeah? In our uh, dasar uh, teaching and learning uh, policy in UITM, we have one clause saying that you have to learn from people who are, you, you, you uh, people with uh, certification. That means other masters lah, PhD lah in that area. Or from people who are known experts. Some experts, they are not, uh, they don't have certification like you said, that expert. Or people with experience. So they can learn from the three. Some people, they, are, they got a certification, also an expert in the field and also with experience. But some people, they are very experienced, but they don't have certification. So also, you can also learn from them. So in our collaborative uh, teaching framework, which we developed uh, recently in UITM, we asked the lecturers to bring people like this, like the one that you said just now, into the classroom or into the learning session. Of course, lah, the, the fisherman, they, he wouldn't want to come into the learning session, right? So you bring the students to him to learn some of the aspect. 
So what I do, for example, but this semester, I'm not sure whether I will be able to do this. I will bring a teacher uh, who is known to be very good in that specific area because I'm not a teacher. I have never been a teacher. I do not know the school, um, how do I say, the, the, the environment in school. The teacher will know that she will know that better than me. If we talk about technology in ed education, I know all the theories and all the whatever and some of the things that I practice, but not in school. I've never been in school. So we bring a teacher. The teacher, she has a degree. She doesn't have a master's. But she's, uh, do I say that? Oh, tak boleh lah because she doesn't have a, a master's to teach degree students. I'm taking her as an expert. Bring her in and she talks to the students. So that's how my students learn from her or from him. So what you're thinking with this, what we are doing, I'm not sure about uh, IUM at this point or even some other universities, but that's what we are pushing for in UITM. And I think even at the ministry level, because I sit at, um, I sit at uh, ministry level, we have one committee uh, where we are doing the, um, how do I say, the program um, characteristics, eh? uh, academic program, for example, we have one we call personalized or another one we call community-based program. So community-based program, students who go into that kind of program, let's say degree in whatever, let's say take lah, eh, degree in social innovation or whatever, something like that. From the start, he or she will be connected to the community. So what community is he connected? Maybe like you said, to the uh, fishery or the, the people uh, in Terengganu, maybe to the fishermen and so on. From the start, he or she will learn and will help will service the community from the start. Uh, so that one, the, that kind of program will impact the community. That will be launched soon tau, in July or in August. So if you're doing the research on that, you are actually on the right track. Oh, okay. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for, okay. for your insights. All right. Thank you, Sister Shida. Um, how, uh, is there any any other question? Oh, by the way, uh, we have um, our organizer has added in the evaluation form. We we need your kind assistance to fill in the evaluation form so that when we get uh, more feedbacks from all of you, we can invite our prof again. Actually, I would like to propose to invite you again for a for a portfolio study portfolio. Uh, I really interested on this study portfolio <laughs> because Actually, it's new to me, bro. I never. Yes, I did um, my mapping lah. I did just scribble here and there, but I I never I never know about this study portfolio. This is the first time I heard. So it's it's relatively new. I'm so excited to learn about it. Actually, in my HE 4.0, one of the initiative is uh, e portfolio, which is the study portfolio. So especially for uh, undergrads because they don't have, they are going to go out and uh, become employed later, right? So like for example, in UITM, I'm not sure whether my students have actually done this. They are, uh, from the beginning, they are given the, uh, they call it e-folio, my folio. So every time they experience something, they, they attend uh, a course or they go to the community, they go to rumah orang tua, whatever they are going to put up that experience and what they gain from that particular uh, experience. So it will be on that portfolio. So uh, at the end, the portfolio is accessible and will can be accessed by the employers. So if you're a, a student and you, your portfolio is, woo, you know, very good, the, like, the employer will say, look at this, this student. He's gaining like the CGPA 3.7, but look at the experience that he has gone through while he's in apne, he's in the university. Uh, that is uh, part of uh, my HE 4.0 and we have uh, actually implemented it in UITM for the undergrad. For the uh, uh, postgrad, it's a lot about reflection lah, actually. A lot about reflection. I know I've been a postgrad before. <laughs> I agree with you, Prof. Yeah. Any more question before we wrap up? Any? Calling once, calling twice. Okay, bro. Before we stop, I um one advice from you to 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 us postgraduate students. 
<laughs> what is the one advice that I wish I should give? Hmm. What one? What what will be one? There's so many things to say lah. But one thing, okay, I would say, stay motivated and passionate. Okay, the main thing is to start your. I hope all of you have started your research, your postgrad, eh, with a, a subject area that you are passionate with, and you need to sustain that. If you uh, if you're not passionate about that particular area. I'm I'm sorry for you, you know, because it will be very very difficult. So you have to stay. You you have to. I really believe in regulating uh, the motivation. You know, sometimes you feel like so down and you're not getting whatever. So you do something different with somebody else, and then come back to whatever that you have left. Lah. Um. I I had a very good experience in IUM when I was a post grad. I've got a a group of people, colleagues who we work together, for example, and I, my late uh, supervisor, he does not control me. He did not control me. You know, I, I met him only th three times face to face throughout the four years. So normally, uh, he let me do whatever that I want to do and he will just say, okay, uh, that's good, go ahead, or something like that. And he, he, didn't, he didn't do the controlling part and that, that gives me a lot of freedom to work on it. It was it was a good experience but I I keep myself motivated lah. Sampai tu tu ni pun I always every day is about being motivated and loving what you want to, what what you're doing. Okay. I, I think that's the uh, that's the best thing I can say. Like, I won't tell you about theories and whatever, you know, the latest to whatever that that's that's secondary to me. All right. All right. Thank you prof. So, dear brothers and sisters from UITM, if you would like to come and join us for postgraduate study, you are most welcome. Come to us. We help you. Because I'm a PGSS. Free advertising. Free advertising. Because I'm, I'm a PGSS uh, postgraduate society as co-member. So, if you need anything, okay. uh, just uh, text us on the FB. You can ask anything uh, about our program or whatever. We help you out. Okay. So, um, any any last question? No more questions? I think we 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 end our we are about to end That's our session. That's a question. That's one question. question. Semua malu ke prof? Ada ada satu tu. Ada satu question. Ah, from mom, um, brother Ahmad Fakhruddi. What do you think about educational power of humor on student engagement in online learning environment? Oh, you know the answer, uh, brother Fakhruddi. It is you need humor for example for for I uh, mean. For sure, you need uh, to bring in humor and you need to bring in that, you know, that, um, how do I say, that environment where people can be free. So, I have one, uh, the last time I presented, I have one slide that I showed, you know. Last semester, I have my student, this semester, I even have one student in my class who they use snap photo, kan? So, they change their punya, uh, their punya muka. Too. So, when he was answering his que the question, he changed the into a potato lah, something like that. And the whole class actually came to life because, you know, they were laughing uh, about his uh, whatever he's doing. But it is actually changed the whole tempo of the class. And uh, another thing is uh, humor can also come in through uh, cartoon. Uh, I, I, I will, I teach, I, when, I, when I do this innovative technology in class, I will teach them how to create uh, cartoon easily by a tool, for example, like Piston, very simple tool. They, can, you can easily get people to come in with their ideas and put it into a simple cartoon clip. Can be humorous, most of the time it's humorous. But uh, I would say the answer, the power, you, you need humor in student engagement, especially in online, you cannot get student. You cannot be too serious, lah. Uh, for you know, you're not in class. How do I say it? Huh? You you cannot even uh, go to the student and say, "How are you?" Because it's, everybody looks the same, all in boxes, right? Uh, but I appreciate when students uh, do something like that. Uh, even um, teasing their friend, you know, in online class last semester, what they did was they they started uh, matchmaking each other because 
they don't really know each other. Right? So and then they meet, meet this person and this person. I let them do that. I mean, at the end of class lah. Because, you know, and then they, actually one of them said, uh, they feel like they, they, are, they, are, they, they can be very close to each other. But I had two groups and I even joined the two groups from time to time so that they can uh, be with more uh, friends and so on. So I, I, I go for humor. And I'm a very visual person. Lah. I, I like pictures. I like cartoons. I like that kind of thing. So it's, it's very powerful. actually. Thank you for that question. I like that. Okay, thank you, Prof. Any more questions? Last, last call? Ada tak? Oh yeah, before we end our session, the, organ the organizer requests for a, for a photo session for everyone. So please oh. turn on your camera. We have about I, I, one. Sister Damia is here to, to assist us. So come, everyone, turn on your camera. We want to see you. Shakira, that, that's one thing you may not be able to get because when students uh, join online session, you don't know how they look like. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, that... I, 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 I know that I, I have experienced that for one year already, Prof. Uh, <laughs> somehow, the hair, la, the whatever. La. <laughs> anybody, anybody else? Uh, hi, Dr. Nohayati. Now I see you. Welcome to hi, our session. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, I, uh, you're Hello, alumni as well. Oh, okay. Tadi saya nampak Dr. Fiham. Dr. Fiham dah ada session ke? Yeah, okay, I saw Dr. Fiham. Anybody else? Ada tak? Ada letak lagi yang lain? Come and join us for... Ah, hi Dr. Fiham. Dr. tengah drive ya? Oh, my goodness. Driving. Okay, sister. Is sister Damia taking the photo? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay. okay. Another one. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much for a very wonderful session today i'm so um i i, I wish I, I i want to learn more from you i think quite a number of us want to learn a lot from you now we will i uh, maybe uh, we will write a proposal again to cps to invite you inshallah <laughs> okay, okay I uh, <laughs> with that thank you so much thank you brothers and sisters um uh, dr nohayati dr fiham and the rest other lecturers who join us today brothers and sisters um and uh with that uh, let's end our session with us with kefara and surah al -As. okay with that assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you so much have a wonderful ramadan and i inshallah thank you bro thank you bro thank you dr fiham Right, and thank you to all my students who will stay. Hello, Mariko. Hello, Mariko. Hello, Mariko.